Jordan, uh, thank you for joining us today on the World Fusion Show, where we bring you the leading innovators in world fusion music. Um, today, my guest is Tony Vaca, uh, percussionist, uh, spoken word artist, um, uh, composer, and uh, um, a musician, visionary musician. I work with Tony in two bands, uh, Impulse Ensemble and in um, uh, Tony Vaca's World Rhythms. So here he is, Tony Vaca. Hey everybody. How's it going, Derek? Great, Tony. Thanks so much. Oh, great for pleasure. Being, being great pleasure. Today. Where are we going? Well, man, so you've, we've played together a long time. We've been mm. friends for a long time. Mm. Um, and and uh, I just want to know where you get your inspiration from in wow. music. You know, I mean, when the music starts, I'm inspired. When, when the needle hits the record, I'm inspired. And I think some of that started, has to have started with my parents. They were big uh, swing dance fans. Mm -hmm. So I'm here in Basie and Ellington. And more important than the music really was the, the, the liveliness, the, the way their eyes lit up when the music started rolling and when they started dancing. And they weren't just little recreational dancers, they were really good. So I <laughs> saw that light them up. Right. Uh, meanwhile, I grew up in the 60s, so I mean, it wasn't difficult to find inspiring music everywhere from just the, the way music was changing to, the, to amazing singers, poets, a lot was exploding. So the inspiration in general was the sound, but really there were groups, you know, there was the Art Ensemble of Chicago. Hey, there were the Beatles, there were the Rolling Stones. It was everything from pop music at its sort of best, a little edgy, all the way into the jazz stuff, which were both preceded, and then all of a sudden jazz turned around, and Miles Davis, you know, blew blew the walls down with his sound. So all these things sort of not only inspired me, but sort of said, you don't have to follow that many rules right now. So that was inspiring to me because you know I didn't know many rules, so it was good. It fit my personality very well. So That's great. that was inspiring. We were so lucky wow. to grow up in the '60s when we did. Oh man, it was incredible. Yeah, for those who missed it, I don't know. I mean, it's like, how do I explain this? It's hard to that explain. the music morphed, that that culture morphed. Uh, challenging time, you know, not as uh, not as romantic as some people say. Like in the '60s, it was a rough time. Yeah. The change was extreme, but I loved it. You're right. We were lucky. Yeah. So, um, I, you spent many times, had taken many trips to Africa. Oh uh, yeah. And one of your main projects is. A, uh, the Senegal America project. Mm. So, would you like you to tell people about that? Sure. What you're doing with that? Yeah, well, by coincidence, you know, I mean, uh, I, it really hit me that the uh, music, I'm, I'm a drummer, and suddenly I realized, you know, there's a long tradition of drumming. And while I was into the rock and the jazz and, and the, the, the genres of music with the names on them and all, there was so much more. There really weren't boundaries on the sound if you take a bigger look. And I thought, you know, as a drummer, I need to really go to some of the foundational things that I wasn't finding in America. So while you could learn about the music, you don't have to leave home, really. But I went on a long journey to, West, to Africa, the continent, and by coincidence, in West Africa, I saw the, the most interesting combinations of forces that somehow related. So before long, the country of Senegal, with so much diversity, with so many instruments, former part of the one-time Mali Empire, that's where the music was rocking for me. So I didn't really pick a country, but the region seemed to pick me. And talk about inspiration, I felt like I was hearing some of the, the, the beginnings of how the drum set became the drum set. Mm -hmm. Some of the sensibility beyond, behind how do you more from a sort of swing feel to a funky feel. I was seeing it all, I was hearing it all, and also I was really touched and inspired by this is the birthplace of humanity, this continent. You might want to pay attention for a minute to see how we have gone on this journey together, where they are now and where I was then too. That morphed into meeting people like Baba Mal, Masamba Job, Gokbi System, Bideo Bubes, all these groups and individuals 
who were icons in their world who, and, and innovators. I think that was the, the real signature. They all had something new to say. And while Africa looks like you know, the traditions of the world, the beginnings of things, uh, there's no lack of innovation in the place where all humanity began. Otherwise, you don't move forward at all. So this really struck me. And next thing you know, I was lucky. That's what it comes down to. I was lucky to play with people who had a whole following. And I jumped in with them. And that became Senegal America Project. So how did you meet Bob Amal? Because oh, he's a superstar True. in Senegal. True. Um, my phone rings and it's Jordy Harold who owned and operated the Iron Horse. Want to open for Baba Mal? Let me think. Yeah. <laughs> that's, a, that's as long as that's a tough one. Yeah, that was a tough one. And next thing you know, I'm opening up with a singer, Tzidi Laloka from South Africa. Tzidi was at UMass studying, and she later went on to be the first Rafiki in Broadway's Lion King. Mm. So she has a voice cool. as big as it could be. <laughs> so she and I are playing. Baba Mal and his troupe come in, you know, like, what is this? Can you imagine what they're thinking? The know. white guy's <laughs> playing the African right. stuff, and the African female is singing like, you can tell she knows jazz and all her tradition of South, South Africa, which is pretty right. wide. So uh, everybody meets everybody. Um, Samba Jope, who's the Tama drummer with Baba and Baba Mal, they invite me to Senegal. Whoosh, off I go. Bob is so, is so generous, and he's pushy, too, in, in a great way. He was pushing me to see what was in it for me, and he was pushing his players to go, here's one, one of those American wild kind of babies, you know? you got to follow this wild child. Can you play with him? So it was good for everybody, and, and it was wonderful for me because you play with Baba Ma in Senegal, you just play with Bruce Springsteen in New Jersey yes. or, or the Beatles in Liverpool. Right. That was, that was so I, I fell into that, and you've seen it yourself. Yeah. It's a generous circle. Everybody's amazing. And they really welcome uh, anyone who wants to jump in and innovate and be who they are. That's right. So um, I'd love to go to our first clip um, and just set it up a little bit because mm. Tony has a unique thing that he does with gongs. Mm. I mean, you haul around. <laughs> How many are there? Gong? 20 something. 20 something gongs true. to the gigs. Some big ones. And you usually open yeah. the night with the gongs. Right. And it's a very uh, sonically cleansing experience. You, you said it exactly. But it's not exactly African. No. So no. this is something else, more Asian. Well, you know. And it's beautiful. And I just say a little bit about it, then we'll go to the clip. Well, I mean, if you're in, you know, if you're into the world music thing, then the key word here is world. It's the whole world. And so there weren't really any maps on my interest. Wherever I felt it, I liked it. So the African thing was an example of that, but I wasn't really trying to do any one thing. So when I heard groups like the Art Ensemble of Chicago, or when I heard gamelan orchestra music, whenever I heard these things, it wasn't just gong and one sound. These were songs and amazing, uh, amazing sound sculptures. And so they caught my ear and my eye, and more importantly, they caught my whole body. You play a gong that's six feet across, the room shakes, the earth shakes, your hair moves, your clothes are vibrating. Who doesn't want to jump into that? So that's how my interest in gongs started. And, and the first thing I did like gongs, I couldn't afford gongs. I had hubcaps. <laughs> Down, bing, dong, king, <laughs> crazy. Oh, it was, oh, it was yeah, crazy. Yeah. Then good. I finally got a gong, and yeah. the hubcaps, let's just say it helped the hubcaps. I bet it did. It did. So okay. it, it was cool. So let's go to that clip. All right. Cool. <laughs> You can hear it too. I'm trying to evoke a song. That was exactly what was happening. It was a rhythmic element, sometimes slower than that, but there it was. And 
I wouldn't say I was copying a gamelan orchestra, but I could hear them. I wouldn't say I was trying to turn the gongs into drums, but it was like that. Cecil Taylor called the piano, uh, you know, 88 tune drums. Yeah, it was like that. Only these drums have endless sustain. Yeah. Gah. Yeah. And a huge spectrum of sound. Right. And if you stand in front of a gong, if you've ever done it, then you know what I'm talking about. It's not just, oh, it's a sound. No, it's an experience. You're vibrating. It's an experience, <laughs> and it covers a huge spectrum. And endocrinologists will tell you yeah. that that turns it on. That's right. So now, um, you are known for being very athletic mm. in your performances. You have a lot of energy. <laughs> it's true. It's hard for us to keep it's up true. with you sometimes. It's true. I you get sound it. like three people playing at once. Mm. But I wanted you to tell people where that comes from because you yeah. began as a child, as a young person, doing gymnastics. That's true. Yeah, I mean, you know, as kids, we're athletic. We're we're doing whatever we do. And in where in the part of the world I grew up, outside of Newark, New Jersey. I think that was a venue, a, a, an avenue for people of wherever you came from, a whole lot of recent immigrants trying to prove themselves. And so sports to me was a, a door, a challenge, and, and I loved it. It's physical. And so from that came, a, a, once again, a wide interest in any sport. Give me the ball, give me the bat, I don't know, whatever it is. One, you're trying to prove yourself among your peers, and two, you just want to see what, what's possible. So one thing led to the next, from baseball to football to gymnastics, which suddenly was the most challenging, the most outrageous, the most dangerous. I guess I was looking for the most whatever. <laughs> and so I started doing it, and off I went. But the other sports helped me. So suddenly, uh, I got a scholarship for, to a college for gymnastics, and I got thrown into the middle of that. Uh, you know, Division I, NCAA, you know, go. Yeah, so what that really helped with now, you know, 40 years later, um, I, I know how to warm up quickly or slowly. I know how to warm down. Uh, I like the feeling of, of physical, physically connected to the instrument. So if you're playing a, a drum set or a giant gong or, or a tama drum, there is a great, uh, deep, profound level of physicality. And we're back to the inspiration. If you light up your body, you want more. So I really hear it and see it and feel it in a physical manner. E even, I don't mean just the things that make us all sweat and work hard. I love ballads for the same reason. You know, if you make someone cry or you cry in the music, that's a physical thing too. So I'd like to go to the next clip. All right. And, and uh, where you're playing the balafon. Mm. Now, I would say the balafon is your primary instrument. Yeah. Certainly maybe the most unique I see that. that you've embraced it. Yep. You but you started as a drummer yeah. and percussionist and mm -hmm. playing trap set and right. all that, you know, is the rock era and all that stuff. Oh yeah. Stuff. But that was you the language. Morphed to got an interest in the balafone. Where'd that come from? Well, you know, I, I finished college and I want to get back to my music. Uh, I, I love doing gymnastics, but I mean, at that moment, I, I just had it in my mind. I'm going back to the music thing. I really want to want to see where that's going to take me. So I go on that journey to West Africa and I see these giant xylophones. I'd heard of them. I knew what they were, but to see them being played, a couple things hit me right away. First of all, there's a, there's a joy in it and it is spectacular. And the dancers, the, the, they just rev it up further. So the whole thing is happening, huge amount of, of joy and, and generosity in the music. And then the melodies and the songs, they are just uplifting. And oh yeah, the instrument itself, I mean, I nicknamed it for myself to remind me, I called it, I called it the endocrine tuner mm -hmm. because your whole body's in front of it and you light up. I mean, okay, maybe any player and maybe any every instrument, but that one seems to have it. And it had unique characteristics, uh, wooden keys amplified by gourds with membranes on the gourds. You get this buzzing sound. You're wearing rattles. I mean, it's what? Physical. Yeah. Oh, I'm in. <laughs> so uh, next thing you know, I'm using all the skills as a drum set player, and I'm developing songs. And yeah, you said it exactly. The, the players, I would see two and three players at, playing at once. I wanted to sound like them. I wasn't trying to be three. I just didn't hear it complete until it sounded like that. So I was always trying flams and whatever I could do. And I started hearing, where's the bass drum that they always played? And one thing led to the next, and I invented my rig of things within my reach to make the instrument 
really sing. And, yeah. and plus, I wanted it to be, there was no point in me ever trying to be them. They are them. World music isn't when you imitate somebody. World music is when you learn and apply what you know and reinvent uh, the, the sound in your mind to include everything you're trying. Sure. So we're, off we went. We're Americans. Yeah, exactly. We have a different Isn't that our signature? We grew up with. So I'm the same way. I want to bring in, uh, synthesize right. these various influences. Right. I'm not trying to literally imitate. No, I anything. mean, the, the originators have it. And, they, and we are inspired by them, not to be them, to go, wow, you did that. Why, did, why didn't I think of that? And then off you go. So let's go to the clip. All right. Now, this is a, a part of a song of Tony's called Ballet Dance Song. Mm, cool. get a little sense of your athleticism hmm. and the kind of energy that goes into and coordination I mean it looks more extreme to see it than it does to <laughs> you play know, you're not used to I'm watching looking and yourself goes, Whoa, right? that's crazy I know. stuff I know so you do a lot of work in hmm. schools with kids too. yeah that's, that's true. a big part of your life bringing the rhythm hmm. the rhythm mission yeah. as we might say yeah 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 to young people that's true you want to say something about that well you know there I was doing what you just saw in the clip um, we're playing concerts, we're doing our thing. Uh, I'm doing just fine, I'm loving it. Teachers would sometimes be in the audience and say, you know, would you bring this to our school? And I, I'm, I had to make sure they were talking to me because, you know, the music is, is edgy, it's wild. Yeah, you see it there, you hear the melody, it's beautiful, it's working, but it is edgy. When we all play together, it's an avalanche of sound. So uh, one of the things that I thought when teachers invited me, I thought, what if I really do what I really do and, and, and find a way to invite the students into it for them to discover what I'm actually doing? I don't want to talk down. I, want to, I don't want to play down. And I've never seen a kid not rise up as long as you're not conf trying to confound them with language they, they can't know. But other than that, it's been a great joy to go in there, play like I really play, and have them go, what are you doing? And then I will explain. And whether it's high school, college, or elementary school, there's plenty to talk about from rhythm to sound, colors or textures, to traditions, to where I've been. So there's a whole host of things that come under the category of global citizenship for you and me and for them. So lucky us, you know, when they say come into a school, because I look forward to that. Yeah. So I'd like to go to the next clip. All right. And this is featuring you on the tama. Oh, which yeah. Is the talking drum. Yeah. Now, you were playing the tama. Mm. And really getting into it, but then you met this guy, yeah. Masama Joe. Yeah, this guy. This guy <laughs> turned out to be one of the masters of this instrument on planet Earth. Yeah. And he's playing with Baba Mal, and that brings us back to that Senegal and the Senegal America project. So when I encountered Masamba, Masamba Jope from Senegal, he had been playing with Baba Mal for 15 years. And the tama drum was a signature sound, uh, along with all the singing and all the other drums of West Africa. Uh, tama drum is a small, tiny talking drum under your arm, and when you squeeze it, you change the pitch. And uh, yeah, I knew what that was, and I could change the pitch of my little talking drum from Ghana. But the Ghana talking drum is kind of like a singer, whereas the talking drum from Senegal is the gymnast in the family. So, of course, I'm like, give me a shot at that. <laughs> Lucky me, I yeah, have yeah. the best player on earth showing right. me. Yeah. So I dive in, and it's hand and stick, it's mute and squeeze, it's play fast and slow, it's know the rhythms. So I, I was in heaven, and Masamba was so generous. He just showed me stuff until I fell over backwards. He's a tremendous guy. A but I think guy. he was somewhat surprised at your skill level. He was, he was surprised, but I mean, I, I, was, I was more like, if you can do it, I can do it. He's like, oh yeah, let's find out. But there, I mean, you know, well, that's what I loved. Yeah. I mean, he loved it too. That was yeah. the fun of it. And, 
And this is, this is really a statement that when we share our treasures, more good things happen. Because it wasn't just him showing me, then I'd show him. Now, you want to be funky, Job? you got to do this. Right, right, He's like, right. whoa, let me try that. <laughs> right, right, and good, so, good. you know, he goes on to play with Herbie Hancock and all those guys. Not because of me, it's a skill. But it didn't hurt one little bit that we would trade sensibilities and ideas of how it works from the inside. Yeah. So that's, that's what you're seeing when I play that. Cool. Let's, go, let's take a look at it right now. All right, cool. Yeah, there you are. It's That's great. Fun. So, um, I just, we're going to just close, finish up here, but yeah. I wanted to know um, what you're currently working on, mm. your vision, where you want to be in five years. Wow. How do you feel things are going? You know, uh, first of all, I'm surprised, but it's happened this way that sometimes the music seems to be singing to me and require some words sometimes. So one of the things that have happened lately is that I'm imagining words and sometimes using words or putting words in with the music. That's a cool thing. Some of it's spoken word and going back to the early days of the last poets where you're talking socially about change. Some of the other things are uh, string instruments seem to have, do have be, be in my world suddenly. Yeah. You know, I mean, in my day, it would have been like, oh, Tony with strings. Oh, man, what would that be? Schmaltzy, yeah, right? it <laughs> Exactly. It no. would be like, well, who would do that? <laughs> I would do that. When the string player is Derek Jordan, when the string, string player is Jim Matus, when the string player is Baru Sal. Baru Sal. Right, <laughs> from Senegal. So yeah. I've rediscovered the power of strings, and, and since the percussion work I do is so melodic, every instrument works but suddenly cellos yeah man electric guitar yeah so bring on the strings so that's another aspect and i think um for me i want to integrate all these forces and i want to really have the sounds of instruments ancient and and modern in every way just be an exclamation of their possibilities
hearts and minds gather here to find the sound to put the rhythms and the words down to rock the time to open our eyes to realign our visions and set our minds on peace because it seems like world been hanging by a thread bare thread some nearly gone some already dead i ain't looking for trouble it's already found me i ain't trying to bust your bubble i'm saying i see things gotta change Maybe we're dancing to the music while some child's dying. Starvation AIDS, her people been trying to, trying to turn their ship around. But war, malaria, all this going down. If it's starting to scare you, you know what I know. Things got to change. In every village and city in the world, there's always going to be love, love. In every village and city in the world, there's always going to be love. And I'm just saying, 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 things got to change. If Africa is truly the mother of us all, how could it be some would ignore the call of all our children who need fresh air to breathe or clean water? So we all live to see the next generation turn things around, unite the peoples of our nations with the sounds of our music, our voices, and our calls for peace, love, and justice. And these are the ways we become the change. In every village and city in the world, there's always gonna be love, love, love. In every village and city in the world, there's always gonna be love. Cause it's our nature to be generous. Don't be fooled by those who would say we're designed to be cruel. Life's about spirit, rhythm, flow, how we're all connected, how high we can go. Well, now some in America acting like us say we don't see the power within you and me to re-ring the bell of freedom in the land of the free. Cause that's how it works, if you're asking me. I'm just gonna say, I'm just gonna say, say. Things got to change. Things, 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 things got to change.